Happy New Year, people! Talking to a super special Who's That Anime podcast episode of Reminiscing, because it's New Year, and that's what you do at New Year. You think back in the past and look forward to the future. So, yep. Um, yeah, this is what this one's yeah. about. So, guess what? We watched anime this year. Yeah. Should should we ta- should we uh, have a a quick recap of where we've been this year so far, Colin? I can what? take us on that journey. Oh, Steve's taking us on a journey down memory lane. Do do so, do 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 do. For those of you who have been with us for a while, uh, you'll remember that last year we ended up uh, getting part way through Cowboy Bebop, and that's where we sort of uh, kicked off for the new year. Um, oh yeah, was was finishing Cowboy Bebop. Um, we did so about the beginning of February, so that's, yeah, uh, yeah, like that. That that took a took, took a while. Um, <laughs> after having started that, I think somewhere in like October of the year before, <laughs> <laughs> we did it's... also cover the movie. To be fair, and we also did do a Christmas special of, of Tokyo Godfathers. So yeah, yeah, we did that. I think we started Which... just just for the live action. I, th- I think Netflix. you're right, actually. Uh, interestingly, and I think this is a travesty, is our bonus episode, the Christmas episode from last year, Tokyo Godfathers, is one of our least listened to episodes. Oh, yeah? Yep. I oh. honestly, like, that That upsets me because I think that's one of our best discussions. <laughs> it was a good good discussion, man. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Go, go get the... the... Go listen to that because that's the thing yeah. that we if, talked if about. If you haven't, if you have not listened to that episode, it is re- it's genuinely a fantastic movie, and I, I think we both had like a good. It was a good time talking about it. So, yeah, it was um, good. Yeah. Interestingly, as well, uh, we had a who's that anime first this year where we actually recorded in person. Oh yeah, that's right. Because I moved house around moved. about that time. Yeah, I moved. Yep. So. In February, uh, we recorded our bonus episode, Your Name, uh, in person, in my in my dining room. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because we tried to do it in a, in my place, but that didn't work very well. It, it did not. It, it for whatever reason, it decided it did not want to work. Um, yeah. So that was that was interesting. We have not done that again since. Uh, that's not to say that we won't revisit that potentially at some point, though. Yeah, maybe do a live, a live episode. Thing. Live a life. Them. No, not then, live a life. <laughs> after that, uh, after having done Cowboy Bebop and moving on to your name, we then uh, took the took the trip back to school days uh, to thoroughly fuck ourselves up. Well, you know, it was um, it was just round about like Valentine's Day, so I figured we should do a romantic. Uh, Lovers uh, coverage. Well, thing. we did we did your name as a sort of Valentine's Day thing, and then you're like, you know what else is like Valentine's Day? And it's like, no, Colin, what is? It's like, well, school days. School days is as romantic as it gets. Uh, I genuinely feel like I'm potentially still scarred by that. Uh, but to be fair to it, like, I it's not it's not good. Like, no, I will I will. It is not a like a must watch. But I will say, like in terms of shock factor, mm-hmm. there are very few things I've watched that have given me that sense of dread. So, yeah, yeah. we 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 did that. And uh, you you love your horror. I do. It's pretty horrific. Uh, we then went on to do Azamanga Dayo, the very short movie, which well, was so short, and somehow we still managed to talk for forty minutes on it. <laughs> Um, that's good which is wild I, I just want to read out a comment that we got out uh, from uh, our uh, YouTube channel on school days okay I'm going to murder this because it's all in Spanish uh, and it was like bueno video hermano mercies mas toma to like Manito, you brano, anime la verdad. 
SD through L primer Ami KV. And I think it's basically it's goes along and apparently translates to good video brother you deserve more take your like hand and good ami the truth is this was the first ami i saw and he gave us the first up. anime you saw yeah it was the and first you, time and you watched more and he's watched more yeah <laughs> <laughs> kind of oh, worrying shit. but at the same time that is like wow <laughs> At the same time, I don't leave. I just use Google Translate. So, not gonna lie, uh, I I got I got the first bit. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Uh, happy enough with that. Deserve more. Take your video hand and good anime. The truth is, this was the first anime I I saw. Dear Lord. Oh, there's that's there's the only um, abbreviation in that. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, so there you go. That's well, that's a comment we got. High praise. Yeah, it was good. I mean, I hope you've, you've expired your tastes from that. I did certainly. I mean, I hope so. There's another anime I that I like to show Steve, it'll probably show him. Oh, God. Uh, oh, well, yeah, you did show that one clip. We can talk about that at a certain point. <laughs> Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So after we finished uh As a Manga Dio, the very short movie, mm -hmm. uh in March this year, we took a trip, a very long trip, uh on our adventures in Steins Gate. Yeah, we decided to stay stay oh, yeah. a while in uh Tokyo Shibuya while we jump around timelines. We started that in March, Colin. Yeah, we did and we <laughs> Just finished it. We did the, the two seasons of it and the movies. We did the two seasons of it. We did the movie. Uh, and the OAVs. We did the OVAs. Yeah. Uh, shit, where are we here? Uh, God. We finished that in October. <laughs> that was a full six <laughs> months, man. Se se almost seven months. Yeah. On the same anime. That was a commitment. Uh, yep. It was. I I don't know that we will ever commit so wholly to anything like that again. I mean, but I feel like there was there was no real getting around that, was there? Uh, we could have stopped at the first season. I think we could have done, but it, it gets also progressively more <laughs> wild and weird <laughs> in the and second the... season. So, uh, yeah, it did go places there. But I still enjoyed uh, first better. I I would be happy just to turn shit off there. There was another anime that I was kind of like that, and that was a uh, or something like that. I don't know that one. I uh, it's about kind of like gang culture in Tokyo or something like that. Okay. It's basically this new gangs coming on the strip, and they're just actually being a gang of friendly, good people that help people type thing, and they're getting like a lot of street cred and stuff like that, and. And it has like weird uh kind of like pulp fiction feels of camera movement where they'll be going down like by they'll be like in a car and they go by and then the camera kind of shifts to the person outside or something yeah. like that. and i kind of liked it i liked the first season and then they expanded it on the second season i was like ah second season nah could have ended it there that the shock the suspense they finished kind of like the storyline and could have stopped there. Well, that so often happens, though, doesn't it? Yeah, um, I mean, I don't know. I feel like maybe Bleach was prob possibly the same. Like, I do or... need to watch Bleach at some point because it's now on Disney Plus, right? So, yeah, one, one or season one and season one and two of it. I think it's a season one and two. Yeah, uh, kind of like was a good good story I got interesting and then they kind of finished that up and then they went to another area and I was like why are we going here and then you gotta love stuff like that though I believe they also filled it a lot with a lot of filler because you know I knew back that's why, why I gave up on Naruto back in the day <laughs> 2000s 
<laughs> the filler was the was in, the thing in, in two thousand four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got to say I uh, I didn't do it all well. Uh, I watched yeah. Neutral, and I got so far in, and then it was like, nah. And then they kind of stopped it and jumped to like his later years, and then oh, Sh Shepherdin. Yeah, and I watched a bit of that, and I got so far into that, and then it just kind of dragged its feet because I think it was trying to, because the manga was still there, and it was kind of like yeah, not trying to go past it to have filter so this this slowed the promotion down. Yeah, yeah, I I I think like uh, I gave up uh, after the whole arc with Orochimaru coming to the village. Oh yeah, you know the huge the huge battle that yeah. <laughs> after all the different trials and things like that. From I think it was like maybe eighty or nine seventy or eighty episodes in. It's so, like yeah. I was I was totally with it, and then then Naruto left the village with the Frogmaster guy. Yeah, yeah, and they did they did they did fuck all for several weeks <laughs> and and as soon as that happened i was just like i am i'm done i'm done <laughs> can't be yeah. doing with this yeah yeah the tuning dance was the peak of it i felt yeah it was, it was like the, the, all that stuff with the the competition between the villages as well like the fight between rock lee and gara and stuff like that is like peak peak naruto yeah like just amazing stuff uh very reminiscent, actually, of like Dragon Ball as well, like original Dragon Ball, mm. um, with uh, Goku's fight where he uh, <laughs> takes off all of his weighted clothes. Uh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, the guy who wrote in the rules very heavily influenced by Dragon Ball. I believe. Yeah, I mean, I think it's hard not to be though, right? Like, yeah, Dragon Ball. It, although, like, Dragon Ball was one of those like huge cultural influences that still permeates, like generally within the audience i feel like it's also it was like the starting point for a bunch of other different shonen <laughs> things like a real north star in that same way oh yeah fist of the north star da -da 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 -da. we did also have another first this year colin which was that uh you you missed an episode <laughs> oh, oh yes that's right i missed missed out and the. Uh... And that was that was during Steins Gate, wasn't it? Uh it was in the middle of Steins Gate, yep, between episodes nine and ten uh of the podcast. And uh in in that stead, uh our special guest who's been our special guest a couple of times, Robbie, uh stepped in to record Vampire in the Garden. Yep. Uh, which was was uh did you ever watch it in the end up? No. I think you ended up watching it. It was all right it's, from what you say. It yeah. sounded like it's it's pretty good. Like it's definitely worth a watch. I don't think it's something that I would go back to, but like I enjoyed the time I spent with it. So it was, uh, yeah, it's pretty good. Um, so yeah, we we continued along the Steins Gate train, <laughs> did the movie, jumped into zero. Um, we just kept going, kept going mm -hmm. on that Steins Gate, and uh, and then that brings us actually quite close to modern day where we started in october with our spooky season our spooky trio of movies mm -hmm. bio hunter d a uh, bio hunter vampire hunter d two things with hunter in them how did i not realize that at the time uh <laughs> and perfect blue um yep. and then on to our most recent uh episode uh our re most recent coverage which is chainsaw man yeah yeah so, Which is also kind of a first because I think this is also the first time we've covered a show that's actually on and happening right now. Yeah, it's, it's live. Well, yeah, it's still live, isn't it? It's not finishing. Yeah, up. I, I don't think it finishes till just almost the end of this year. So, oh, well, till yeah. what time has now passed? Yeah, uh, clearly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're absolutely recording this on the thirty uh, first of. Oh, the first shit. The first. Yeah. We're recording this on the first of January, twenty twenty three. Totally, totally doing that. Yep. It's all live. Definitely doing that. It's like you're so listening to us live through the podcast medium of pre recorded yep. material. Yes. Live, we're totally live. <laughs> I totally should get like but, a wee. 
the wee flashy it's red, like a the red dot, light. the wee red you mean like the one I did for my live stream? Yeah, yeah, and it just like blinks away. And goes, You're live. I was so uh, so chuffed with myself for making that. <laughs> anyway, so I thought there were a couple of different topics I thought we could cover in this sort of review. Now that we've talked a little bit about um, what we've done this year. Uh, so I have I have three questions and then I have some surprise questions that I'd like to ask. Three questions, and then and then a surprise one. So I guess three topics of discussion and then a little bit of surprise. But the first topic of discussion is what is the favorite or your favorite anime that we've covered this year? Oh, favorite anime this year? Yeah, I mean that we've covered this year. It's kind of hard. I mean, so, you know, like 90% of this year has been Stan's Gate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's why I say it's really hard not to say that. Yeah. Uh, Stan's Gate. But the one the first, I didn't really gel with the second. Zero. I, I think that's fair. I, I always felt like the second season was a bit of a missed opportunity because mm. that. Um, that uh, uh, where we get to in the first couple of episodes is so wild, mm -hmm. and that kind of turns out to be not really that interesting. Like it never really gets covered much, <laughs> and it's like, oh, but isn't it amazing that that person that he kind of destroyed the universe trying to save, destroyed the timeline trying to save, is now a now an AI here? Is that not is that not interesting enough? No, apparently the answer is no. No. So, it's not. You just had to bring him back. <laughs> well, I remember. I remember being so uh, so excited to talk about that because I like that reveal uh, of of um, you know uh, Kurosu, yeah. like that that timestamp of her consciousness. Mm -hmm. I, the, like that was so good. Like so 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 cool. And then she just kind of became an extra character that we talked about, rather than it's like, can we not? What about the implications of this AI? Like, this is kind of serious, guys. Yeah. I don't, don't know where... There was, like, a lot of things in that second season that's kind of like, oh, we did... Where's this? And then it's like, all right. That was a thing. Because <laughs> there was that bit where it was, like, the other lass who yeah, also... Seemed, yeah, who also seemed to have, like, the... Stein's Gate of Warrior thing where you just with a remember alternative timelines. The Reading Steiner. Yeah, the Reading Steiner. It's just, it's really weird. And um, it's only covered a few times and she's goes back, she's still going to the hospital for treatment for it and yeah, that's weird. And, and then they don't really say much about about it. They, they never they never mention that again. <laughs> yeah. They, they only uh, used it as like a station point for him to meet um the professor at the hospital talking to the head of the hospital. That's right. That's all they ever did with it. And it's like what? Wouldn't it be good that is bizarre. to have discussions and he can go, well you know what? If you're remembering this crap then you must have Riedensteiner too. And I thought it was the only one. And then go on another diversion. And now that I know that I'm not the only one, we're never going to mention it again. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> never. Um, um, never ever. It's. It, I. I must admit that was deeply disappointing. Like I still enjoyed it. Like don't get me wrong. It's. It's mm -hmm. by no means bad. But I think that um, from where the first season leaves off, which is amazing, and then to kick off the second season like that is like, yeah. oh, this is going to be so good. And then it just kind of like, eh, okay. Get, get goes places, not the places I wanted it to go, but it, it goes places. Yeah. So, oh, I mean, it's all based off games, so yeah. Maybe, maybe playing the games will be a bit more there. So yeah. So what's your favorite anime? Is it Steins Gate Two? I think it would have been. Uh huh. Had we not had we not covered Perfect Blue. Ah yeah, 
that makes sense. Yeah, it's perfectly is up your alley, that's for sure. I think like the thing that gets me about that, I think, is that obviously, like the thing about Perfect Blue is that it's it's it is absolutely classic. You know, like it's the one that people always reference as mm -hmm. this is this movie's messed up. This is difficult to watch. It is creepy and weird and horrific. And it doesn't start out that way. No. It starts out the first forty minutes of it is it's interesting and it definitely captured my attention, but I, I, I like I think with all that hype you're trying to live up to, I felt like a little bit disappointed and I'm like Oh, it's, it's it's good good and then as soon as her reality starts to break down more and more and it's not just that she's not sure of where she is it's that we're not sure of where she is uh that i started to get really sort of um uh wrapped up in it and mm -hmm. i think the uh the reveal of um the the manager yeah. being the, the 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 actual killer is oh, it? It's just so good. It's like it, it is. It's perfect. It is. It is a perfect movie. I think. Um, yeah. The pacing and and characters are brilliant, and the design of everything is. It looks gorgeous. Like all of it just is amazing. It's. it's it was really something. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh. Well, I mean, it's pretty good. I remember watching it back in the day. It's just not my cup of tea, but I like the ending. The ending is, is certainly it's like, oh, yeah. it's her, and now she's on the scene. And then I loved how the kind of kind of showed her reflection as yes. as the actress rather than the manager. And then, or or it's, no, it was opposite way around. Reflection showed to the manager rather than her. Yeah, and it's so good. it's she was chasing after him, and you know she's seen her floating around going. Boom, 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 boom. Where in natural fact she's really un uh, fat and unhealthy, and just goes <laughs> like going. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, I think her her uh, the, her death, or her sort of like lunging onto the the piece of glass, is I, I you know like we talk about I I always talk about those moments where it's like oh that was an audible gasp. Yeah, like that was me going. That was me going. <gasps> <laughs> oh, oh god like and i i think uh i i've i think i did that several times during that movie <laughs> like you know like her reveal and 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 a lot of the kind of incidents and things like that but it, it was just uh it, i'm glad that having you know it's been been around for a while and it has mm -hmm. always been touted as one of the biggest deals yeah, and, like up there, up there with sort of like Akira and and Ghost in the Shell. There is also Perfect Blue is also discussed, <laughs> and somehow I had not watched that one. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I, I'm glad we got the chance to do it, and I think yeah, it was it was every bit as good as I'd hoped it would be in the end up. I think so. Okay. Yeah, definitely a definitely a winner uh, in my eyes. Yeah, I like your name too, so, though. Your name is hmm? a good movie. Your name. So, I'm not. I'm not going to lie. Uh, <laughs> it is a close, 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 close second. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I absolutely adored that movie in a way that I'm not super into that kind of thing. Mm. Um. But it, I, it, it, it's a perfect ten movie as well. Of just like it's, this is tremendous. Yeah, um, I like very emotionally impactful. I think in a way that um, I think like I like I like any sort of medium that has that sort of level of uh, uh it, well, just the level of impact. Hmm. And it I feels... felt like it did it very well yeah and yeah. It, it, like you know whether it's whether it's um uh as a fan of horror movies like that's that's kind of my thing is like i i like that sense of tension or dread or or fear like that that ability to have that sort of like palpable 
um i must and you know I, to talk about that palpable tension definitely school days had that like they <laughs> they delivered on that consistent overbearing feeling well of awkwardness um, and just uh, but i think it's i think it's more than just awkward because it's it was a mounting tension like oh, yeah. cuz i think like after a while it it stops being awkward and it starts just being it's like no there's there's just so much like it's snowballing catastrophically mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, into the things that are going wrong, the lies that are being told, the realities that are and are being found out, and it's just yeah. But but with your name, it is like it. I'm trying to remember. Like it's been a while since I watched it because they took it off Netflix. God damn them! Oh yeah, they did, didn't they? Uh, and I've been trying to buy it, uh, and have been unsuccessful. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was looking for Blu-ray copies of it because I wanted like a decent rip. Uh, oh, actually, now that uh, now that I have a Blu-ray drive that's region free, uh, I will be buying the 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 disappearance of Harry Suzumiya special edition oh, from the know. US. Got a region free Blu-ray drive. Well, that's that's what I'm using to rip my collection. Oh, you're not doing that. You didn't see that, guys. It, it's perfectly legal. He's got the copies. That's fine. I, 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 shit. My whole shelves are full of these things. Yeah, <laughs> it's fine. But I, uh, like that—that that was the one thing that was stopping me from picking that up because it's region one or region A in Blu-ray, and unfortunately, uh, we are region B. So, do what? Yeah. So, Blu-rays were supposed to stop the idea of regions, uh, and then didn't. So. Why? Why? Yeah. Why not? Why not? Region one, and two, and three, and four. Because oh, we use those for we use those for uh for DVDs. But it's the same fucking thing, <laughs> isn't it? Or is or, or region A and region I, B are a bit different? I don't know because like I think there's there's seven. If I remember rightly, there's nine regions for DVDs. Oh, okay. But uh, and I, I wonder if they consolidated that because I don't think there's nine. I think it's A, B, and C for Blu-ray. So, all right. So like, Pat, they potentially uh, tried to simplify it. Asia, Europe, and yeah. uh, US, Americas. So, uh, region B is I think UK and Australia. So it's PAL. Uh -huh. Okay, so here we go. Region A is North America, South America, US territories, Japan, South Korea, Taiwan, and other areas of Southeast Asia. Region B, Europe, Africa, Middle East, Australia, and New Zealand. And Region C, Asia, except Japan, Korea, Taiwan, and other Southeast Asia. All right. Uh, DVD. God, how many are there? Uh, uh, DVD. You got US. Then you got like South America. Then you got Europe. Uh, you know what? I was totally right. There are nine regions. How did I remember that? <laughs> yeah. So there's zero, which mm -hmm. is just plays anywhere. Yep. Uh, there's one, which is US, Canada, and Bermuda. Region two is Europe, but not Belarus, Russia, Ukraine. Uh. In fact, it is Europe, Greenland, British Overseas Territories, Overseas France, Turkey, Middle East, Egypt. It seems like it was just really horrendously divided eventually. Because. Uh, is it not like a. Is it not like a. Um, basically based on the old PAL and N NTSC, which I call this. I agree, but then there's, there's uh, the disc. Uh, Region 6 is mainland China only. Ah, yeah, yeah, but that's because uh, that was that's China. Uh, China. Region seven. Uh, uh, the discs are MPAA related DVDs and media copies of pre-release in Asia. So they had a pre-release region for Asian territories. All right, and they had region eight, which is the discs are played on international venues such as aircraft, cruise ships, and spacecraft. 
So. <laughs> I love how they put spacecraft in there. It's wild. I don't think you had time to watch anything on a shuttle. Because That's so bizarre. Must be talking about the maybe up in space in the International Space Station. Yeah, I mean, they, 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 like I presume that is what they're talking about. Um, it it seems it seems weird. Like that seems like total overkill. But yeah. I guess you'd need to have legal precedence. I don't know. Like it seems weird that there's all of that, and then they consolidated it into A, B, and C. Let's <laughs> <laughs> well, still have Blu-ray players up in space. No, nah, they haven't got that far ahead yet. And regions, I think, was also for VHS, wasn't it? And what games. Was that, sorry? Uh, regions were from VHS and games, wasn't it? I, I don't think there were any region. There was no region uh, specifics on games or or VHS. Yeah. Like if you used VHS, it would run anywhere. Oh, but you have region, certainly regions for games. Well, so yes, but not because they wouldn't play in the machines. No, I mean... It was bec because of the cartridge shapes, more often than not. Oh, for ah, SNES, but then that was the kind of like predate the SNES um, regions, but then does it not like you can buy like American Game Boy games to go in your British Game Boy. I've got plenty of American Game Boy games. That's oh. and Canadian ones because I used to. That was my aunt and uncle used to send me them for my Christmas. Or maybe I'm not sure there's something, but certainly, uh, yeah, mainly on PlayStation was because uh, there were NTSC and generally our TVs were. 50 hertz and not uh, 60 hertz. Uh, 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 oh, interesting. Atari 2600 didn't. Atari 7800 did. Uh -huh. uh, sure. The 5200, the Lynx, and the Jaguar are region free. Uh, Nintendo was the first console maker to introduce recent regional locks to its consoles. Yeah, what was that on DS? NES apparently used it as well. Uh, it used authentication chips. Yeah, yeah. I have a fe I have a feeling people got around that anyway, but oh yeah, he did. I mean, there's a few that's, things that's you could do. Because I know that the the Nintendo sixty four uh, had region lock because the cartridge had a different notch. <laughs> <laughs> on the bottom or something like that because i i remember watching when we did the we went we ended up buying a japanese nintendo 64 but i'm, I'm pretty sure you can mod your nintendo 64 and remove the chip the the plastic notches on the bottom of the the console uh yeah yeah i got the japanese one here kicking about somewhere probably up in the shelf up here uh yeah and then SNES was a different shape in America over here. Um, yeah. I I still, you know, controlling control media because they don't have the copyright rights or something. Yeah, I mean, I, I get it. I hate it, but... <laughs> you get it. <laughs> like, I was really lucky because I, I bought a Friday the 13th box set on Blu-ray and it very fortunately came as region free, so... Ah, nice. Nice. Yeah, certainly, anyway. certainly I had that with Clark's. That was a regional one. Yeah, I, I have that issue. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, yeah. I used to get around that by having a, a, a region uh, a region unlocker for my PS2. Yeah, I remember uh, I remember editing my uh, mate's uh, DVD player on his PC. And he, oh, he I've done that too. Change the region five times before it locks itself and <laughs> sticks itself in one region. And I remember having to uh, actually install DOS on the machine to redo the, the firmware because he was complaining that he couldn't watch any of his DVDs because it was set to region one or something. Amazing. It's like, it's region one now. I can't do anything. Oh, all right. Okay. Here. Sorry. Sorry. 
you should buy your DVDs from America now. Yeah, just get the better anyway. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. Second question: uh -huh. What is what is your favorite episode that we have done this year? Favorite episode? Yeah. Oh, that's a hard one. Even oh, this harder. is easy for me. <laughs> oh yeah. I don't know. Can't. I'm trying to remember the episodes. It's, it's it's a toss up of two, I think, for me. Oh, you mean episodes? I take it you mean like things that you watched, or rather than what? We no, did? like ones we episodes we recorded. Episodes we recorded. I suppose as a man dial the movie <laughs> the very short movie the very short movie that was pretty good uh, if we managed to let, make it last 40 minutes must have talked about something in there <laughs> probably nothing worthwhile but yeah no. <laughs> uh, and then uh, mainly last year I think I can think of them like your Oh, or maybe the last episode of Steinsgate, uh, the original that, season, where, where your head popped. Yep. That, uh, not well, so it would be season seven, episode 12 for us. It was discussing episodes 23 and 24. Yeah. And yeah, that, that was a very reminiscent, uh, conversation. Like when we spoke, like I think about the, the previous year's favorite episodes, like when we discussed the last episode of Lane. Yeah. Uh, was was wild, and uh, the the disappearance of Harry Suzumiya. That whole thing was just trying to work out what on earth was going on and unwrapping that that whole thing and how it tied yeah. together. It was very reminiscent of that, and uh, yeah. yeah, that that was, ooh, it was so close, so close to being that for me. Yeah. Alright. That was a good time. Was a it, good was. Time. It, was, it was a good episode. Then just watching your mind brought, pop, and then I I sure drop a big one in there and you go, wait, what? And then it just like, yep. no. <laughs> there were so many times where my understanding of that was close to what was right, but not right. <laughs> and then realizing that actually maybe we've been on the wrong thought train the whole time and need to go back and think about another thing was, was pretty good. Very yeah. Enjoyable. Yeah. So, what was your favorite? What was yours? Oh, my favorite. I think was the when we covered the last three episodes of School Day. Oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> that was wild. Oh yeah, that's that's that was, that was that the was absolutely wild. I've never been full of so much hatred for a character. Yeah. Yeah. I was I was so angry uh at that character and and for that that culmination <laughs> was just mental. Yeah, yeah, it's certainly he yeah, he was a complete douche and yeah. pretty much almost deserved what he got. <laughs> Maybe not quite. Oh, I don't know. No, I, he deserved, you know, to be chastised and and stripped down and and you know shown for what he was, but oh boy, like yeah, that, it, it's a really uh, yeah, like yeah. It, it was just it it was although sort of like being slightly spoiled on it due to image searches, it did not prepare me. <laughs> no, no, then ah. Uh... See, well, I was kind of introduced it by a webcomic that I watched, and they had like kind of like art, arty drawings, kind of like in another section of, and it was just like a kind of a, a wee storyline, like because it's kind of a, a weird love romance drama thing, and it's basically I think the guy going along, and he's with. Like there was the main character at the time, essentially, and then his girlfriend, who's never really been shown in the web comic, is appeared, and then she just kind of walks along, da da da, da and then kind of like next thing you know, like the other person's next, like spurting blood out the side because she just like just had the big knife and sliced it, <laughs> and, it's like, and I was like, what the fuck is this? And then. 
and then uh, read in the comments, oh, that, that's school days, school days. Let's watch that. And then I watched it and I was like, holy shit, that was like the worst 12 episodes I've ever watched. But what the fuck? It's not. It's just. I, it's just I, I so hated everything that was happening in it. Yeah. And yeah. It, 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 like I say, it was it, at first. It just was awkward, and mm -hmm. to, to to its credit, I think is like a a relatively good window into sort of the mindsets of of teens to a degree. Uh, you know, all just lecherous pricks, and <laughs> it just yeah, it, and then it just it just goes off the deep end. Yeah, it just jumps, just goes. Oh, here, this is the cliff. Oh, you know, it's like a, a nice gentle slope, slope, and then suddenly it's like, oh no, um, we've like completely just an overhang, and you just oh. fall down the, down the cliff. Uh, it's, yeah, like I said, I, I watched I, I it the first time just because of like, I was like, what? And then it's like, oh, and I was like, why did I watch that? <laughs> I think, uh, there's an interesting aspect to it as well is that I feel like at, at polar polar opposites the way this kind of worked was that as my hatred for the lead male I can't even remember his name which is terrible uh, mm -hmm. you know I'm gonna look them up oh don't do that uh, invoke the, the character names no. um, let's see They're just a uh, characters thing Kotanoa is the the lead female who oof, kind of what is it uh but I, I i i came to like really hate the uh the lead character he was an arsehole mm -hmm. and and just i just could not be Mm -hmm. it, it just couldn't couldn't hate him anymore uh but i it, while my hatred of him sort of grew and grew and grew uh -huh. i just felt so sorry for her oh i just it, got, got to know it's just yeah. everything was just she would try so hard and mm. and not that you know just because you try means you should get everything you want and that you know but just to be so horribly and demeaningly rebuffed and ignored uh it was just it was hard it was hard to watch and just i i felt so sorry for her. and to, to the degree that you know you have that weird thing in your head it's like oh this is this is an incredibly shocking thing that i'm seeing kind of okay with it probably shouldn't be <laughs> <laughs> this is this is maybe the way this show needs to end. Yeah, yeah. It's um, oh. But also, like at the sacrifice of her, you know, like she's she's been driven to the point of uh, well, of madness. madness. Yeah, madness. Yeah. And, and it's it's. Oh. But yeah, that that um, that was wild. That was a, a wild episode to, or, or a series of episodes to to discuss. Yeah. Because that, that last three just progressively gets crazier and crazier and crazier. Yeah, uh, we did it in the, okay, I think the right format. It seemed to work in like three episodes. It just escalated every three episodes. Totally. It, like I think we talked about it as being like seasons and it, it did feel yeah. like that. Like it was it was very much the seasons of the, the relationship and, yeah. and just oh. Jesus Christ. But still, um I I still go like maybe maybe a couple episodes as such to watch. You know, like you'll you watch the first one, you see him well, he's a bit nervous and tempered, and then you watch maybe the fifth one and see that he's like a wild playboy now. And then, uh, and then you watch like maybe a bit more later. Oh no, actually, the fifth one he's probably just like in the kind of romance and realizes he's getting bored of yep. Connor. And then, then he becomes the playboy. Then he comes the playboy, and then 
and then you watch like the last maybe one or two episodes, maybe the last two. He just it, it's just him shirking responsibility. <laughs> it's just like he's like no, like it, none of this applies to me. Everything's fine. Like what the fuck are you talking about? I can do whatever <laughs> I want. Yeah. And uh and and she quite categorically says absolutely no you can't. Yeah. <laughs> well, not not her but um the other one that kind of fancy them. Yeah, well, I mean, the one that murders him also sort of emphatically says you can't get away with this, so... No, you start to ignore that she claimed that she had a baby. Oh, God. That's... And then Oh, the... God. <laughs> that whole... That whole, like... Oh, it's so... I like... It's so awful. I like the thumbnail I'm not using for that new the YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good. Oh uh, yeah, if you haven't yeah. watched watched the end of if you haven't watched the end of that one or even listened to us talk about it, then you probably won't get what actually the reference of that. I recommend. Uh kind of. Um <laughs> I, I, it's one it's one of those things like I I don't regret watching it. Uh... Um I think it, I think it very effectively covers the point it's trying to make, oh, which yeah. is not much. The point it's trying to make is just not really there. It's it's kind of um, I don't know. I I I want to sort of attribute more meaning to it, and I feel like they did have an idea about um, you, you know the the complexity of relationships and and the difficulty that teenagers have finding their identities and and dealing with that. Um, sure, sure. And it, it 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 does that to a degree. Like it does explore some of those things through what's happening, but it definitely does it through extremes. Oh um, yes. Yeah, well, I, I don't know. It was a it was based off a game, a dating sim game. Yep. We did uh, a lot of stuff that was based on games this year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We did Steinsgate, and we did the school days. I mean. You say a lot of stuff, but we've only really covered what four. We've covered like four animes this year, and only and two of those animes is uh, based off games. Yeah, fifty percent of our coverage this year was based on games. Yeah, and you bought all the signs of the games. I have them. Yeah, uh, I've got a couple of them on the Switch and a couple of them on the PS4. Yeah, yeah. Oh well, maybe get to play them one day. Yeah, get get to those eventually. So, leading on to mm -hmm. my next topic of discussion, who is your favorite character this year? Favorite character this year. Favorite character. Favorite character this year. Hmm. Hmm. I always liked Miyuri in the Steins Gate. She was, she was the, the, the one that held it all together and also made him also the, the, the cause of all the troubles <laughs> in the first one. Um, and then you have Spike. No, not Spike. Maybe not Spike. Maybe Ed. Probably Ed from Cowboy Bebop. Ed's awesome. Oh, what's your sound? I must have nudged my mute button. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I right. haven't been saying anything of value. I've been sort of cut manning and just agreeing. So, all oh, right, that's fair enough. You, <laughs> this one, yeah. Uh, and then you got, I suppose, blood. Blood's showed her form and making it good now in the Chainsaw Man. First, I I have couple of blood. Yeah, first couple of episodes of of her, of, you know, ah, she's just some whiny, insane, uh, what do we call it, narcissist, devil. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, only thinks of herself. Uh, that's that's that. Uh. I suppose you'd have um, what's her name from Perfect Blue. 
she was well portrayed. Yeah. As a character. But I don't know. Uh Yeah, I'm gonna go and say Mayuri. I think she was uh definitely on my list. I think like you you've mentioned sort of a couple there. Uh, I think Blood is definitely like I'd, I if we had covered more, I think I would probably have 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 fallen on that uh, <laughs> as a as a result. I I did like uh Ed, but um yeah. All all the characters in Cowboy Bebop are pretty good because they're all yes. very different. It's like the weird yes. wacky one. Uh, Faze, Faze's all right. Uh, Spike's like the cool kind of eh, I don't really care type depressed. Yeah. And then and then you got what's his name? Oh, what's his name? Jet. Jet. Yeah, Jet is like oh. Come on, guys. Stop fucking I, about. <laughs> I think Jet's my favourite from Cowboy Bebop. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I think there's a lot to... Like, while uh, Spike's very cool and sort of measured and uh, I appreciate the pathos and uh, the interesting story and stuff like that, I feel like Jet's story is probably a little more slept on. Like, it's interesting and quite sad. Uh, mm-hmm. And just, I, I think generally, like, he he is a down and out without relationships but has found the relationship like i i just think there's more there's more to he's a a, he's closer to admitting that to any of the rest of them (laughs) in that show uh he's the sort of uh captain of the ship father of the group sort of thing yeah it's it's a it's a really good role he's definitely high up on that list but i think and again you mentioned mayuri i love mayuri like she was a huge part of what made me really enjoy uh Steins Gate. Mm-hmm. Um her her death in, you know, that <laughs> mid season cut in the first season is just madness. Mm. Um but I think I'd probably have to go for Okabe. Yeah. As my my favourite character. Just in the first one. Um or are you, I actually think I, I, has he I redeemed think himself actually, in zero? I think the interesting thing, the guy who does Okabe's voice, mm-hmm. is uh, I think he's a really good actor. Like, I think the performances are really good, and I think both of the sides of uh, Okabe and and uh, uh, Hoen Kiyoma, uh, <laughs> they are different entities. Um, mm-hmm. but I love the journey of sacrifice that that character goes on. Yeah, and I love how, like, particularly I think in the first season, I love that there's nothing that would stop him. Like nothing, he would he, like just. Ah, he, he would just... never give up. To, to he he would he would destroy himself. Mentally and physically, well, he did, to... and and he did, yeah. But I think the the bit that um made me love that character is the bit that kind of leads on to uh onto uh onto season zero onto to Steins Gate Zero is when he's just so broken. Well, he's actually... you know, he just he just can't. He, yeah, he, he couldn't anymore. And like I, I loved that they took it so far, like so so far. He was he was properly driven and tunnel visioned on his ultimate goal, and and finally getting Murray back and and, and making it that Kurosu could survive, but mm. just not having anything left as it was was a was a, I think a really revealing thing. It mm. just it, it just felt right. Um I actually think I uh, kind of kind of going back to favorite episodes we've done very briefly. 
I think it's probably still school days. That yeah. Like, that, like when we recorded that. I also really liked the time when we discussed the episode of Sousa Has Failure. Oh yeah. Yeah. That I think that is probably probably one of the most emotional things I've ever seen. Hmm. Not just in, not just in an animation, like generally, like yeah. it was very very deep and tough. Um, it was a a really sort of interesting, interesting episode structure, interesting conversations around that as well. But yeah, I think that uh, Okabe is a very well rounded character. He is like he's your typical hero who will do nothing, uh, you know, nothing to stop. He will just not stop until everything is right. Mm -hmm. But I love the the other side of that where they they show the part where he's just like I I I can't I can't do this anymore. <laughs> I just need to like I mean if you think about it like just for one for one second it's like I just need to not have everything rely on me. Yeah, I need to need to not literally have the weight of the world on my shoulders from now on. Because <laughs> <laughs> as we as we kind of discussed at the time, we don't really know the amount of time, I... the number of permutations, the the repeats uh, yeah. that he's gone through to get to where he is, and I think like there's some you have to read into that a little bit uh, yeah. to a degree, but. I do feel like there's a there's a significant part of that where you're like, this was a lot. You you did this a lot. Like oh, way yeah. more than any one person ever should. Yeah, he's done the whole montage. I mean think about it this way, is like the end of zero where he, he ends up waking up into oh, he goes back. And his and his back backwards trip was essentially just doing the time leap for like yep. I don't know. How many hundreds it was? Thirty years. Yeah, thirty years back, but you can only back what? Two weeks at time. Two weeks at time. <laughs> but I think I think that's the thing is that uh, the the beauty of that, like that's a known quantity, which I think is like it. That's impressive in itself because that was like that's a that's madness and a commitment that nobody wants you to make, but they appreciate that it's the only way. Mm -hmm. uh but that was a decision that the group made to allow that to happen and to 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 put their you know we'll bet on this and this is how we're gonna we're gonna get where we need to be. Whereas with the other one, he was rogue. He was <laughs> just he was just doing it. He was yeah. doing it over and over and over and and like yeah, we got that montage of how many times he's done it. But how many I get times it, have like, you done you, it? You, well, how many times has he done it that we don't get the glimpse of? And yeah. I think that, like, that I I suspect it's thousands. Yeah, you know, like just mul many, 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 many attempts. And of course, reminding us at that point that he's witnessed his his friend die every one of those times. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. It's just, I, I think it, it, that that's another thing I think is fascinating as well as it, it shows his um the soft like. How much that has desensitized him oh. to to death and to everything to like like to just being. Yeah, um, we did get to see that he was just like, oh yeah, she's probably going to die in like two hours. Kind of yeah. watch watch over her and see it again. And and, and like... You see it in the second season. You you see like yeah. how, that how he is he's he's numb. He's emotionally numb oh, in, in, in in zero. To everything. And uh and I think that's that's the other thing as well, is that you see his relationship with Muri has changed because he's so happy that she's still there, but is so categorically terrified that his presence or involvement could change her stability within that timeline. Yeah. He just wants to maintain that distance. Uh, it just I, yeah, I think there's a lot of really over the course of that show whether or not the second season is as good as the first doesn't really matter, but I think they do they do a lot of really good stuff with his character um, and to show the kind of varying uh, positive character traits, but also just the damage that he does himself. Like, yeah. He just, he ruins himself as a person 
Yeah, well, I mean, I remember when you were watching it, so he complained about his moody dismear all the time, just yeah. being uh, very much depressing. But then that's why he is. He's uh, chronic you, depressed. You start to see that. I think that's the thing is, is that you, you, you kind of. Um... I don't think it's the, the read is immediately there. Like, I think you could probably, if you sat and really thought about it, but I think as you're sort of to watch it, you start to see the interactions, more of the conversations, and more of the the apprehensiveness around, like, what he wants to do, who, who what he wants to do, who he wants to talk to, how he wants to approach things, his his cautiousness. Um, yeah. And, and you know, I, I think then you start to click into it. It's like, oh, this is a personality entirely shaped by trauma. Yeah. A trauma that you you remember that no one else remembers. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's uh it's harsh. It's I, harsh. I think there's an interesting thing in that as well around like, you know, what the reality of that is. Like, cause for him, it's everything. Like it's entirely shaped who he is. And for everyone else, it never happened. Yeah. <laughs> so it must be a it must be a real uh constant difficulty to to marry something that had such an impact on you that literally doesn't even exist to anyone else yeah that's it's it's hard to it'd be hard to do that because obviously unless you've experienced it yourself then oh totally i, I think that's the thing i love about uh, the portrayal the actor's portrayal of that character as well is that um they do a fantastic job of of the the mad Hoin Kyoma, like the mad scientist is is so much fun, it's ridiculous, it's outlandish. Mm -hmm. Um and then the just the seriousness, like the the emotional moments and beats where it's just the the pressure's on and, and the decisions have to be made and and life is hard. Mm -hmm. And then the other side of that of just this kind of emotionally damaged and broken person who just is ghosting their way through life because they're hoping that they're going to cause the minimal amount of damage to those that they love like i think that like it covers a whole gamut and they do it they did a really good job across of all of that i think yeah i think that i can certainly see some of my aspects in him somewhere along lines i i must admit like i think there's there's a there's a lot of uh ability to self-reflect a lot of the way the character is like particularly sort of the the protagonists are drawn. I love, I love that just generally about media. Like I think, yeah. uh, in in a lot of ways, like seeing those um um uh, the the imperfections and things like that in our in ourselves and characters, I think is uh is is impressive and amazing. Like I like the the that that ability to relate even when you maybe don't want to is yeah. kind of a thing. I think it's really good. That's how you get your. How you have like a favorite character and stuff and that? Oh, totally. Because you get to relate with them and the concept, and that's how you you end up watching something. It's like, oh yeah, I, I think, can relate like... to this. It's not like out outlandishly out there. I mean, but then I do watch stuff. It's just outlandishly out there. Like, well, for example, school days. Well, yeah, but you 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 have to you have to boil it down and like there's a like for me the, the like my like of the of blood as a character she's funny she's ridiculous but there's a complication like she cares more than she lets on even yeah. i think that's kind of interesting and with uh with jet like the stuff i talked about you know around that kind of father figure and just the desire to to belong i think is a, such a strong theme throughout all of cowboy bebop but i think particularly for him is it matters more to him i think than it does to any of any of the rest um weirdly um to a degree i suppose yeah it certainly matters um to him and he he kind of realizes it i think more in the others but i think it also kind of matters to the others oh it, i think that's the thing is is that the the beautiful part of cowboy bebop is is that they are this weird family unit mm -hmm. And and again, this is a whether they care to admit it or not, they are better with each other. And I think like Ed is there for the ride, because Ed's Ed. Yeah. Uh, um, but you know, loves having people to 
who care about them, which is is great. And I think for for Spike, he's just happy that he's found people who can tolerate him in a way, because he's become so set as a person. I think due to the the way that things have happened in his life. And, yeah. Uh, but for Faye, like I think there's a, the, I think you're right. Like of of anyone, the most important, the the person who it's the most important to is Faye, because it's the first time she's ever had that in a long time. Yeah. Yeah, like a, a proper family. I think it's like she just doesn't care to admit it. Uh, whereas I think Jet has become more conscious of that, and I, I kind of like that character trait. Is the you know admittance but sort of reluctant admittance <laughs> yeah yeah that's right ah yeah that's good i think there's a lot of good characters like there is um there is i think uh we we've, we've covered we haven't covered as many shows this year but i think there have been like i would also say like um suzaha from uh, uh yeah, Steins -Gate. Steins -Gate, like rates for me like uh, some of the hmm. storylines and characterizations are just amazing. Like in that kind of um, living that life of being nothing more than an implement to make a change uh, yeah. is hard. And I love the how much that takes a toll on her and 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 the way that that kind of permeates through the story into her finding it hard to relate to people not because she doesn't want to but because if she does she knows it's going to be hard to leave it when the time cut like it's just it's, yeah. it's it, i think it's good characterization well i think yeah i just realized when you were on about the feeling of susa was uh was the one where it was in the first season of steins gate yeah where she goes yeah, back yeah, yeah. and she loses her memory and then states that she failed and writes the letter. It's, it's horrible. Yeah. Like, genuinely, genuinely horrible. Yeah, that's a, that was a harsh take. It's like, oh. Gosh. Well, it was one of those ones, like, you know, uh, that, as I say, like, kind of leaves a pit in your stomach of, like, oh, that's that's not good. That's bad. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then, don't feel good about hearing any of this. And you start rewriting things. Um,. I think from that point, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, she was the last one. She, he changed, and then he starts going back. Yes. It yeah. did change something, but not the thing... Yeah. She meant to change. Yeah. I think she died again, and Mr. Brawn is... Uh... He had, he had the, 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 the time clock that she left yeah. him. Yeah. So uh, it was. It was. It, she thinks she's failed, but actually, ironically, she didn't fail. I think is the. It, well, but it still result. Still resulted in her death. Yeah, she failed to the degree of like she was meant to give the computer to her. Yeah. Find the computer and give it to. Them. And it did. It didn't happen. Not in that timeline, and then so they had to send her back, and then. We still didn't get it because what's his name? Shining finger, uh, yep, mystically changed Moika. the, yeah, m mystically uh, changed the the message and changed the timeline again. About yeah. finding but, but, it, that was wild. But yeah, I, I think yeah. like that initial, the initial, the initial gut check of that of, oh, actually, she's dead now. Yeah, and none of this worked. In fact. Her her last days were meaningless. Yeah, because she just she lived the rest of her life knowing that she had messed the she had fucked up the one chance yeah. to make the change. Like that's that is like catastrophically what it's just one of the saddest things. But then of course it turns out very fortunately not to be quite as doom and gloom as all that. But at the time. <laughs> It's like oh, that's oh, well, that's all good. Well, they went on for a good minute, minute or two, just going. I failed. I failed. I yeah. failed. and I was it's like, hard. Oof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not just one fail. It's just like no. 
a hundred failures. I think if I had to like uh, if I had to pinpoint it, I'd I'd say that I think that Steins Gate had some of the most interesting characterizations. Like they had the to me the ones that are the greatest de deal of empathy for. Like even the ones who are the bad guys in a lot of circumstances. <laughs> like like Moika, where it's like yeah. and and Mister Braun, you're like I get it. I'd like doesn't mean I don't hate the fact that you're against this group, but, you it's know, not, I, only against, I get it. Against it because of the, the job, and he's got, he's kind of like hung over the barrel on it. And yeah. what Moika is essentially, for a reason, was like being just society reject. She was like, um, what's That's that? another incredibly sad. Yeah. It was like um, oh, there's a term for it now, where people just kind of don't leave the house. Shut in. Uh, well, for us, yeah, in Japan they got another one. Can't remember. What oh, it was, really? So. Yeah, yeah. So there's like people that just leave, don't actually like leave their rooms and stuff like that. And they'll get everything delivered to the house and never actually go outside. Ikikomori? Uh, that sounds about right, yeah. Form of severe social withdrawal. Yeah, so they essentially just live in their house and never leave. And apparently it's a thing that's happening now. Jeez. I heard that uh, there's people in China it's kind of realise that the uh, Things are stacked against them, so they'll they'll not do anything. Oh, what are they called again? I've talked about it before in one of our chats, where they just basically live in the site where they they don't do anything because it seems meaningless for them to do it. Nihilists. Uh, well, sort of like nihilists, but they do. They do the bare minimum, I think, to go through life. So they kind of like just as a kind of like um ah uh, was it a protest type thing against the society that they live in? They uh -huh. do as little as possible. Well, here's a a deeply worrying thing: is there's a an article here that says. Well, the Japanese population is 125 million. Oh, yeah, they're they're past a point where I believe, I think that's more old than young generation. But on top of that is they're saying, like, there's an article here that seems to suggest that the Hikikomori population of Japan could be, could top 10 million people. Yeah, Jesus. I, d I mean that does that seems a high estimate because the rest of the estimates are saying between fifty thousand and a million. Still a lot of people though. Yeah, that's a lot, man. Just sitting about doing nothing in the house. I mean, they could still do some work, I think. And there's pretty crazy though. Counselors and stuff, but it's not. It's not really just associated with the. It's it's got that name in Japan, but there's people all over the world. Oh, I'll do this for real. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, harsh. We've covered the main three topics. Uh huh. And it, it, it obviously like that's the the bulk of what we wanted to talk about. A bit of reminiscing. Mm -hmm. But the way I thought that we could end this episode uh -huh. is one with a little a, a quick a quick question of: Is there anything else that you would recommend anime manga wise that you have? Uh, watched, read, seen this year that you'd like to share with others and, and promote? Mm. I'm trying to think what I've watched other than this. Quite see, I think I've just been watching the shows here. No, no, there's other <laughs> things that came on, but I can't. 
think I watched the the, the Japan sinking one. It was on. Oh, Netflix. the natural disaster one. Yeah, I kind of liked it, except from like the the main character, and it was a bit. I don't know, dippy, stupid, in Fair a enough. sense. Uh, it's like, oh, what am I doing that for? Oh, boy, well, I don't know. Maybe because like the country's in that. It's sinking into the sea. Uh, and I haven't watched... I watched Bubble. Did we watch Bubble? Was it Bubble? I didn't. Where it was like kind of set in the future and like Tokyo's drowned underwater type thing and you can do some bubble hopping kind of sport thing. That was kind of cool and colourful. It was on Netflix. Um... What else? Did I watch that? I'm trying to think. As a series, have I watched a series all the way through? I've got to say, most of my watching is, is on Netflix. If it comes on Netflix, I'll end up generally having a wee nosy out. I haven't. Um, yeah. And, and manga wise, I've basically been catching up on Battle. Battle Angel Alita. Uh, only got one more volume to get. Nice. Uh, nice. Yeah. Um, that's stuff. I bought. I bought the first volume of Akira. I think you said that. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I still need to read that too. Not. Not a big reader. <laughs> no, I. Uh, I wish I was more of a. A reader, I uh, I've uh, I got a a book, a couple of books that I'd like to to get through at some point soon. Um, in terms of stuff that I've watched this year, uh, I would definitely um, th I mean I, I the, the stuff that I have that I've been watching that I haven't watched for the show has been very sort of mainstream. So people are already watching them or have watched them probably. Like yeah. I watched all of Attack on Titan this year, and that was that was great. Uh, yeah, really enjoyed that. And currently, halfway through season three of My Hero Academia, which has also like been been really good. I certainly watched um, the first season of that uh, on Netflix. I, I, I rewatched. Uh, I rewatched Gantz this year. <laughs> Did I? Uh, did Castlevania come out this year? Uh, no. Uh, well, oh, well, one of the seasons might have done. Last year. Maybe last year. Uh, um, I think. Other than that, oh, I, I, uh, I also rewatched uh, Elf and Lied as well. All right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Elf. Yeah, that's another kind of like what, and then it kind of like that's goes. A... Kind of quiets down. Yeah, that 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 the I think the thing with Elf and Live, the one that the thing that always gets me about it's just the first episode, like the even the first the first scene in the first episode, yeah, yeah. is amazing. Like it's it's uh, it reminds me of uh, of Parasite Eve and and the Galerians and stuff like that. It's just it's really cool. Yeah, it was just oh, kind of kind of oh, look, it's just kind of. Uh... Um, what do you call it? Slice of life anime. Yeah, yeah, definitely gets a bit softer. That's yeah, for sure. and then like uh, it gets serious towards the. Then did they ever finish the it? Oh, oh shit! Sure. It oh, it's just what it kind it's, of ended. It's a cliffhanger ending, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, she kind of just leaves. It's it. Yeah, a, a few things do that. Yeah. Um. But yeah, uh, other than that, like I I uh, I read a lot of manga this year, um, mostly um, mostly Junji Ito stuff. Uh, yeah, but would also uh, recommend the Drifting Classroom. Uh, there are some really very lovely hardback books of the three volumes of that that you can get that are are really great. Um, yeah. Also read. Uh, Monster, 
and Chainsaw Man this year, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I did I did a lot. I, did, I think I did a lot more reading than I did watching. Yeah, I but, think you I think you probably have. I but, but it's it's been good. I, I've definitely been been really happy with the amount of uh, stuff I've been getting through. Um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, and and the last question, and this is just you know. No, no real discussion required, but a, a, a bit of a read to the future, Colin. Uh -huh. uh, what would you like to watch next year? Is there, a, is there a particular show that you would like to to cover next year? Um, I know I would kind of want to go back, maybe go back to look at some, uh, maybe older stuff. Like maybe just kind of like maybe watch some of the old ninety stuff um, mm -hmm. that we probably brought us into watching anime in our younger years. Like maybe uh, Command Tank Police, Battle Angel Alita, the OAV, mm -hmm. um, 3x3 Eyes. You ever watch that? I know what you mean, but I haven't watched it. Yeah, that's kind of a weird one, but um, yeah. All right, and you wanted to watch um, was it memories? Yeah, uh, yeah. I I would I would very much like to watch that at some point. Um, I think I'd like to cover Ultimate Helsing, maybe. Ultimate Helsing. Jeez. Yeah, that's a long uh, ass anime though. Uh, like 11 episodes, right? It's only 11. I thought it was longer. I f have a feeling, though, that they might be 45 minute episodes. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, and what about the, the anime with the stabby girl? Yeah, so what is that? Uh, something like They Cry. They Cry. Oh, I can't remember. They cry anime. There are ten episodes of Ultimate Helsing. Oh, that's it. They they are forty nine minutes each. Um. Yeah, so it's a uh, he he gagashi when they cry. Or. And it was kind of it's I can't go. Oh, maybe dur 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 be a good one to watch but then this is like a lot of stuff to watch in one year when it took us some months to watch like well we uh we did actually watch you know a lot of uh a lot of the same thing yeah hikarushi Hiku... hikarushi when they cry so um... one thing i will say i'd like us to watch would be uh, the Uzumaki anime. Uzumaki one? It's the Junji Ito Spiral. All right, uh, yeah. Is it's that... been delayed like three times now. <laughs> <laughs> Is it going to be good? Cause... It looks gorgeous. Like it's pro it's it, it's animated like it like it's flowing from the page. Like it's black and white, hand-drawn loveliness. Oh, Jesus, um, <laughs> and uh, the soundtrack is done by Colin Stetson, who is um, uh, he's a composer from Hereditary and Color Out of Space. Those oh. soundtracks are fantastic, and actually, the new movie, The Menu, he also did the soundtrack for that. So, okay, uh... he's a real flair for uh, for for wacky, spooky shit. So. No, I use spooky shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this the this one I was talking about. It it does. There's an anime and it's. A television drama. Oof. Looks like they're done a live action. Oh, that's another one to watch. Because uh, this this one. Might take us all year to do. 
gone by. Oh dear lord. The the amount of Fs's maybe. Fs when ones. they when they cry mm -hmm. is the first of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight seasons. Yeah, yeah, it's it lasts long, I haven't watched them all. That's why I say it maybe not. <laughs> What? Apart from the fact that it, there's that scene where the, the kid just kind of like goes, Sorry, I can't beat you, so I'm just going to um, stab myself repeatedly in the head. It's gross. Cool, but gross. Uh, it's full, so yeah. full of scenes like that in that. <laughs> I think I watched it about the same time as school days. Jesus. <laughs> Which is probably. Been in some state. Some mind state that I had, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I think that's that's kind of what I'd I'd like to to leave us with is the thoughts of where we'd like to go this coming year. Uh, I think there's a lot of stuff I'd like to cover. Mm -hmm. I'd love for us to be able to, uh, if I had one one wish or one way, I'd I'd love to be able to talk about something is. I was going away and watching an entire season of something and then coming back together to talk about it. All right, yeah. Okay. So, like, uh, one episode or. Sorry? Like, one episode? Or just do, like, a live yeah, yeah. presentation? Like, like, a, like, a one episode or, like, or a couple of episodes. But yeah, I, I think that could be. It gets around that idea of, like, you know, there needing to be 13 or 14 episodes of something for us to talk about. <laughs> Things, yeah. There's going to be yeah. a lot to talk about, but yeah. Well, well, you can maybe squeeze that into one of the, like the old nineties OAV things. Yeah, o totally. O like, I think there's, I think it works both ways. From what I understand, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, that could be that could be fun. That could yeah. be fun. I'll bring it around my old VHSs. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah! <laughs> Get those ripped and put on my Plex drive. <laughs> It's all, it's all legal. He owns all. Owns it all. Yep, it's fine. It's all all yep. perfectly legal. Lot, lot, lots of stuff to back up. Yeah, yeah. Going to be good times. Yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, that has been our 2022. Uh, mm -hmm. We are now moving into 2023, um, and and our second year of doing this. Yeah. <laughs> what started off as a kind of way for us to watch more anime during the pandemic and <laughs> have a conversation about some stuff has kind of just persisted into enjoying talking about more anime and and different things i think it's been it's been cool mm -hmm. um i have definitely appreciated being able to talk about this stuff because i don't feel that anyone else i know really kind of gets it in the same way no yeah i know you feel that, that... <sighs> I had people that watched it before and ah, they're a bit strong in opinions and things and so I don't talk with them because <laughs> like, oh yeah, you know what they've done this time? They've done this and it's like, oh well, okay. I don't really care what they're saying because I've not watched it or looked at it and I probably never will type thing. It's just, I, ah. just, I don't I like to experience something for myself. Totally. In, in sense, and I don't really want to listen to someone bitching. It's like, like people bitching about the Marvel agenda, where it's oh yeah, we're just changing them all to females or something like that. And oh, it's like, I was like, oh, well, I don't it's care. So tiresome. It's is it a good movie? Not really, because they've put the the gender, the the gender agenda, in in yes. In the the agenda of the movie, I don't know. I just it's so it's difficult. Gender. <laughs> yeah, how many times you could say that? Like, I, yeah. it, like I feel like that's a that's a tough one because I, I, I hate deliberate attempts to make it seem that you're sort of into it and like dealing with it, which Marvel has done. Mm -hmm. um, I far prefer when I don't question for a second about a strong female character or a character of a different sexuality. Or a different ethnicity, like yeah. those are the ones I prefer. Like I, I have never once cared watching an anime about 
the gender or ethnicity of a character or sexuality has never bothered me once. Like I, because because I feel like they're they're telling a story and the information I'm getting is the information I'm getting because it's important. Yeah, that's it. I think all that's that's kind of what it is. But then I also get that maybe they've been obviously lacking that in media a lot. Like yeah, like uh, representation is is a is a difficult thing. Like because mm -hmm. there's there's definitely. <laughs> An abundance of white male protagonists. Um, yeah, but at the same time, like I think it, you know, it, 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 it's it as a as a white male, white straight male saying the thing of, "Hey, it's never bothered me when I've seen characters otherwise." Uh, that's all well and good, but it doesn't mean that there's fair representation. No, no, it is, and. I feel sometimes it kind of feels forced now, but then at the same time, is it any more forced than what it was before? But then I just think That's also the, the tough thing, though, right? Partly, maybe things aren't written as well as they were back in the day. I think the problem is is that things... in an effort to 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 try and make things representative, mm -hmm. it comes across as as forceful and deliberate, and like I understand that. Um, but like my my favorite Disney movies, for example, uh, -huh. uh one of them is Moana, yeah, which is an entire cast, uh, you know, of 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 Maori, yeah, descendants, and it's like that lead character female never bothered me for a second. This is an awesome movie, yeah, uh, and then one of the other movies that I really love is. Aladdin. Yeah, it's a guy, but he's not white, which is an interesting start. Yeah. So I, I don't know, like, it, that's the thing is, is I never, it's never about for me, it has never been about um, being able to see myself in the character because I look like them, but that's because I've had an abundance of that growing up. Yeah. So like I, I but I so I can understand why people would look at something and feel like it's not for them. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I can't yeah, yeah, in that sense, it's just, oh, I just kind of wish it wasn't. Um, no, I mean, it's it's. I don't want. I don't. I don't think that every piece of media has to be. Uh, uh, or should have to be. Uh, uh, a way to explain that other people exist. Yeah, like that. That sucks. That that's the place we've gotten to. Is that? Yeah, you know. I don't. I would never want anyone to feel that they shouldn't be represented or marginalized in a show because that's not the point. The point is, is that it sh if you want something to be accurate to life, there's going to be a spectrum in there. Unfortunately, at the moment, yeah. But I suppose at the same time, by not by trying to change that spectrum, is trying to change the mindset of people so that the spectrum isn't. This way it's, it's, it's always well, the, the problem you yeah yeah it's it's it's, it's tough because you the more you try to change the minds of people who think that that's not how things should be mm -hmm. the more they'll fight back against that and the more mm -hmm. of a pro the more a problem it is yeah well that's it it's like a, a character being gay or a character being black or a character being trans all of a sudden becomes it's like this is the agenda this is this is how they get you and it's like what does the what does the what does the gay agenda look like is it marked on the calendar like, how does this work it's, like i'm fairly confident that the mission the gay agenda is not well everyone should be gay no just accept I, 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 yeah exactly it's like i'm fairly sure the gay agenda is like hey um we're here, and I hope that's that should be okay with you. Yes, that's 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 fine with me. Mm -hmm. But it kind of makes me sad that it's like, well, why is that difficult? <laughs> why is that difficult for everyone? I don't know. I don't. I don't feel it because also don't have that mindset and don't really have anyone that's fully in that mindset. I mean, no. Well, uh, we keep we keep mindset. we keep very different company yeah like i like 
you and I are fairly, fairly progressive people and probably more liberal leaning uh, yeah. than not. I... But it should boil down to just like people are people and you shouldn't hate just people, right? That's not really yeah. a left or a right leaning thing. You got to hate people for a reason. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. Like, give me a reason to hate you. Like a proper reason. Like, <laughs> yeah. well, it's like the, the guy, you're... like the guy, sets things on fire when he shouldn't really do it, or the guy, like, yeah. just doesn't listen and does the thing that you told him not to do, and it's like exactly. Or or the the dicks that say. Like, might go, oh, there's parking spaces here, but you know what would be good? Let's park outside the shop on the... I saw that. I was in there. It's in Perth. And you know, like, the, the bit it goes down past the council building and the the concert hall. Bit. Yes. And you know how it's, like, uh, got that... Oh, what's it called? Where the... There's no pavement, really? And it's flattened, and it's yeah, 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 yeah. It's make make designs make people drive safer and more carefully, and stuff. But it doesn't work because people are assholes. Um, yes. But then there's the guy. And there's boots. So there's boots. There's a shop, and there's a car park right next to boots, like up the side. But this guy is somehow decided to park his car, took his car, and parked it in beside boots' back door. And me and, my, me and this guy from work was kind of just walked around the corner and looked at this guy just reversing back in this air to go back onto the street and going back, reversing, reversing, reversing. And we're going, what the hell? And then there's people like trying to walk on the pavement, which is where that is. I'm like, Jesus, what are you doing, dude? And then he kept reversing, kept reversing, kept reversing. And it was obvious he was going to hit the lamppost. And he did. And no one. By the way, I like to like go, hey, dude, what you're doing? No. Because, like, he shouldn't have been in that position because that was a pavement. That was blatantly a pavement. I've, uh, incredible. I've... And also, there's another bit. So, you know, like, the the concert hall in Perth? And you got, like, the wee passageway that goes to a road at the back. And the side. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The past, like, the travel lodge. I was walking down there once. That's that's not a road. That that is just no. a, a pavement. And there was this, <laughs> this old lady driving the, her car going doo, 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 driving through this bit, da 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 and I was like, What what's she, what's she doing? And then she just kind of drove out. Went onto the, the road I was talking about earlier and then just parked up at the hearing aid clinic. Good lord. And I was like, the fuck? <laughs> Can't do that right now, though. They put benches and stuff in the way. Yeah, well, wouldn't stop her from trying. Uh, no. Wouldn't stop her from trying. So, well, yeah, I think that's it. It's the end, end of 22, beginning of 23. Mm -hmm. um, there's nothing set in terms of plans other right now other than we're going to continue to talk about Chainsaw Man uh, until yes. it's done. Um, yeah, and... I think we have we've committed probably to coming back whenever season two hits to to, to keep that going at some point. I doubt that'll yeah. be next year. It'll probably be the year after. To be fair, um, possibly. Yeah, we'll see what's what's going. Uh, Crunchyroll may seem to have, uh, say it's eight seasons. Oh wait, no, we discussed this. Crunchyroll, Crunchyroll lies. Uh, Crunchyroll <laughs> yes, tells you there's eight seasons because there's a Portuguese season, a Spanish season, uh, an English season, a, a, a French season. <gasps> oh, is that what it's doing? It's counting all the different it's dubs. It's counting every dub as a different language. I like uh, what I, the the the, dis the way data is represented in Crunchyroll and actually in in uh, Funimation, I never felt was right. Like because I like when I go to a thing, I want to choose the language, and I want to choose the the subtitles mm -hmm. on one thing. Yeah, I I don't want to have nine different entries for each language. Yeah, I don't it's... want the dub 
and the subtitle things to be different entries. They should be the same entry with different audio channels. I yeah, I I, I like I get it that there's probably like a lot of that there's probably a lot of um uh legacy stuff that means that that's the way it's set up and and I know that like Crunchyroll was never really so much dedicated to dubbing. It was more about it was more about the having the simulcasts come from Japan, like pretty much day and date, you get a new episode, there'd be subtitles and, mm. uh, but now anime's popularity, I think is, is, is climbing a bit again. And as a result, you're seeing people want dubs. And I like, I, I think the dubs are well produced these days for the most part. Um, certainly better than they used to be. Yes. Um, and so uh, well. yeah. Yeah. Like that's the thing. Like Chainsaw Man's like a couple of weeks behind in terms of its dub for yeah. english so i feel like they're gonna have to do they're gonna have to do something that that changes that once uh once once crunchyroll once crunchyroll shuts down funimation mm-hmm. permanently uh they'll have to do something that that sort of consolidates the the data properly or more in a better organized fashion sure sure they have to do that See. they have to well yeah <laughs> I, I say have oh. to in place of I pray that they do. Yeah, um, <laughs> I think that's more yeah more accurate. Anyway, so we've been trying to end this this for like the last twenty minutes. Uh, yeah. So shall we just do it? Yeah, yeah. it's this has been who's that anime? Uh, thank you very much, everyone, for joining us for twenty twenty two. We've had a lot of fun discussing not as many animes as we did the previous year, but certainly quite a few nonetheless. Um, I hope you've enjoyed like listening to us kind of reminisce a little bit about our favorite characters and episodes and you know uh, just shows that we covered and a little bit looking forward to the future but things that we might want to try out in the coming year um, yeah obviously uh, as always our home base is at anchor.fm uh, forward slash use that anime where you can find RSS feed or any the links to many things such as Spotify and Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, where you can download and listen to the show. Um, we don't really make any money on this. Uh, we just mm. kind of get together to talk about anime because we enjoy doing it. Um, mm. So if you wanted to leave us a review, five stars would be absolutely welcome, and anything less with some constructive feedback would be would be awesome. Um, if you already rated us or reviewed us or you can't because of the software you use, then um, another way to, to help us out would be to just tell a friend if you like what it is that we do. Um, that would be greatly appreciated. We have a Facebook page. Uh, it's facebook.com forward slash who's that anime, um, where we post kind of the latest episode updates and just occasional memes. Uh, we have a Discord channel. Uh, you can find the link for that in the show notes. Um, we have a YouTube channel where Colin painstakingly puts together the video versions of these podcasts. Uh, I believe we will be. Uh, where will we be? Simultaneously broadcasting this one. Oh, that's right. The specials on the day. That's date right. That's right. That they're special on. I think I was wondering what that beeping was on my. Uh, I think my mouse went to sleep. All oh, right. Okay. <laughs> it's like what? What disconnected? I hope it wasn't my microphone. Oh no, um, no hearing you fine, <laughs> and clear. Yeah, so that's cool. Uh, that'll be cool to to get this uh, up for for New Year. Yeah. Um, Colin and I occasionally like to play video games. Uh, Colin at twitch.tv forward slash couchfuel and myself at twitch.tv forward slash alepayman. We haven't really had much opportunity to play this year. It's been a bit busy. No. It's been a bit wild. Mm-hmm. But with uh, different things in our lives, have been kind of keeping us very busy. Um, yeah or uh but i think uh, new house yeah yeah totally like commitment i think it would be good to commit to try and doing something maybe even once a month uh for those the next year but we can we can talk yeah. a little more about that anyway will they have to um, be bigger longer faster it's harder faster better stronger yeah uh, maybe yeah um, i think if we're doing it once a month the world yeah one more time do 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 round the world <laughs> Oh, so, we could cover the Interstellar 555 for the show. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, we can go and get that on the go, yeah. I only oh, remember it on the... Uh, I remember watching that on Dundee's Channel 6. 
like each Shit, of... yeah we, that's a callback to another episode yeah yeah i don't remember what episode but that is a callback to another episode oh it was long uh, long ago it was a long time ago yeah but uh yeah so obviously we haven't recorded but we haven't been live playing games for a while but if you wanted to watch some of the stuff there there's a good archive of all of those at youtube if you go to youtube.com and look for couch fuel or hail payment yeah you will be able to find them there oh nice uh, oh. i think that's us what's our uh where are we rating in canada this week oh shit actually it might have updated uh in the time so i'm just gonna I have mean, a look at this there'll certainly be a wait now over in that country our audience is mostly located in canada uh we are currently number 10 in canada number 10 number 10 podcast in, the, in canada number in the animation and manga category we are number 10 uh, we're also uh rated in the leisure category number 209 in Ooh. canada wow uh, and we're also rated number 58 in the animation and manga category in russia yes welcome come <laughs> Almost yes. Very uh, stereotypical racism there. Uh, anyway. It was, it was, uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't really uh, mean it as an offensive way. You Pete, tried. That's the thing to hate people for. <laughs> Casual racism. Well, yeah. Casual racism. Yeah, I, I, I get that. I get that one. If you hate someone for being fairly being, racist being casually racist yeah that's, yeah that's probably okay is it racist i don't know it, it it's it's uh yeah i don't know I, I i i tend not to to try and think about it too much it's just like the different levels of pedophilia that's that's also something i definitely try not to think about too much <laughs> or, we uh... colin <laughs> all right I, just, just so you're aware, there was a bit in here where we talked about some stuff, but I probably cut it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I mean, tell. All right, uh, I'll. Uh... <laughs> we'll catch you next week for um, more Chainsaw Man. More Chainsaw what? Man. Yeah. It's... What episode will that be? Eight. Let me just double check that. I think it will be episode eight. Yes. I think we're on to eight. It'll be, yep, it'll be episode eight. All right. Well, see you guys later. Same anime place, same anime time, same anime universe. See you. See you, folks. See you later, guys. Bye. Bye.